Hey folks, Robbie Payne with Chrome Unboxed, and today we're going to unbox the Lenovo N23 Yoga Chromebook. Now this is the education version of the upcoming Flex 11 Chromebook from Lenovo, but we've got this device in-house already, and so we want to go ahead and unbox it, take a look at it, and get our first impressions for you on camera. All right, so before we jump into this thing, let's take a look at the specs here. We're looking at Lenovo's first MediaTek, and so it's the MediaTek 8173. 4 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage. Uh, what's going to be interesting about this device is that it has an IPS display, 11.6 inches, but it's a, uh, marked as HD, so that's 1366 by 768. So that's going to be far less pixels to push around than, uh, say, the Acer R11 had. And the good thing about that is, if it has less pixels to push, then usually it performs a little bit better. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how this ARM chip performs with less pixels to deal with. All right, so, um, relatively heavy, but a compact package. Uh, thing is not massive. Uh, doesn't look to be collecting a lot of fingerprints, which is always nice. Uh, it's kind of got a, a really matte, almost textured plastic finish. Uh, what looks like kind of bumpers around the side, possibly. And the same finish on the bottom, screws, speaker ports, all that kind of stuff. Now this is a Yoga branded device, so we've got the Yoga hinge um, around the side over here. We've got a Kensington lock, power, volume up and down, headphone microphone, nothing across the front. And over here on the side, full size HDMI, uh, USB 3.0, and then a USB C for power uh, display out, hopefully. We'll test that and see if we can get dual display out going with these. Sometimes they can use USB C for power only, but we're hoping that's not the case. And then a full size micro SD card slot. Let's open this guy up. And we've got a full glass panel across, which is kind of sweet. Um, hopefully, because this is Lenovo, it's going to have a pretty nice tr uh, keyboard trackpad combo going on here. Uh, surface feels pretty good. Click feels nice, if not a little firm, uh, but pretty good. Pretty large size on the trackpad as well, um, as large as my entire hand. Uh, really good click on the keyboard actually, uh, pretty good response. Uh, not a ton of travel and there's a little bit of give, just a little bit, um, but overall that keyboard feels pretty good so I think that's going to be a good typing experience. Again, like I said, it's a yoga device so we've got the multiple modes we can jump into and obviously because of the thickness of this device, um, it is smaller so that helps uh, as far as you know the tablet mode but it's still gonna be a little unwieldy and it's, it's pretty large as a tablet. But overall, if you need to get those kind of display modes going, such as this, it is kind of nice to have on your lap um, or on a table like this where you can use those touchscreen apps. So in the box, you get a pretty standard charging block. It is a little bit smaller, which is kind of nice, but it's still a two piece, um, nothing fancy going on here. It is USB type C, which is pretty cool. Um, like I said, we will try some multi-display outs and all that kind of stuff with this as we have a full-size HDMI and a micro uh, or a USB Type-C over here. Um, that, that's an interesting combination because usually we're seeing as people are moving to USB Type-C, they're just kind of nixing any kind of uh, display out. But as this is an EDU-focused device, it's probably a lot simpler to have the HDMI on there. They've got the room because the device is a little bit thicker, and it's probably more straightforward to be able to get people into um, sharing the display onto the big screen. So we're going to run an octane score on here and I will say uh, a couple of things just as I've uh, been poking around on here just a little bit. Uh, the trackpad is marred by that same issue we have with a lot of cheap Chromebooks where there's a slight bit of travel before the click actually registers. So there's travel then you hit the click mechanism and you get the click. So if you were to depress on there and, and push it against the click mechanism and then click it, it actually feels really good. Likely, um, I don't necessarily recommend that you open your Chromebook up, but there's usually a couple springs here that kind of hinge the, the device back up. 
likewise here that kind of push it up from the bottom. So this is the hinge itself, and these are the springs that push up. You can adjust between those two and usually find the right balance, and sometimes they just come out of the factory with the wrong balance on these cheaper track pads, but that can be adjusted, and it looks like you can probably pop this open and work on it pretty easily, I would think. Um, overall, thus far though, um, the performance has felt pretty snappy. Like getting all the, we, we kind of cut this off camera, but getting all the stuff that normally installs, uh, installed actually really quickly. Um, and I know, I know Octane is retired and it's not technically being updated anymore for the time being until we come up with some other type of testing. This is the best we've got. Um, and it's still, I think, a decent measure of a Chromebook's ability in general. And again, let's talk about the processor in this thing really quickly. It is the same processor in the Acer R13, which is the MediaTek 8173, and it did pretty well on the R13, but it's pushing a 1080p display. This is just pushing a standard HD, so 1366 by 768. It's quite a few, quite a few less pixels to actually put on screen. So even though the Octane score is probably going to be around the same thing, which should be somewhere in the nine to ten thousand range. Uh, the behavior of this device actually should feel a bit faster because the GPU is not having to do so much every time it renders a web page. Um, and that's about to finish up. Yeah, 99.90. So we're real close to 10,000. So that's good. Um, 10,000 is, is beating the Rock chip, which is in the Samsung Chromebook Plus, and it's beating the, um, um, the current set of Braswell devices that are out, usually getting around 8,000. So uh, we're, we haven't gotten an Apollo Lake device in yet which is the newer version of what Braswell was last year. So we'll see how it fares in some benchmarks, but we're gonna to try to come up with a set of benchmarks that show some real world uh, performance. Um, and an update just popped up. So we're not even, we weren't even running the most recent version and we'll see what we're on. Uh, we were on 56, so um, that Octane score could go up a little bit more. For the review, we'll talk uh, a little bit more about those things, but overall, uh, performance feels pretty snappy. Uh, we'll load up Chrome Unboxed real quick and we'll throw up uh, The Verge. And our site's usually not too heavy or too intense, but you can see it's it rendered it up really quick. We do have relatively fast internet here, but um, I've seen some devices struggle through our website just a little bit because there's videos and there's pictures involved. Uh, there's a little bit of a stutter there, but really, um, I'm pretty impressed by how smooth everything is working right now. Let's get a little pinch to zoom action down the page. So, all that looks nice and snappy. Um, so, initial impressions, um, pretty favorable here, uh, and especially at the price point we're talking. Um, th this thing's going to move around in its price range, somewhere between $230 and $270, $80, something like that. Um, it, with a better trackpad, um, I would say this is shaping up to be a really great Chromebook around the house. Um, the display looks pretty good, decently bright. It's hard to tell under all these lights how bright, but I would I would say I'm going to guess about 250 nits, probably in that range. Um, so it's going to be adequate for most things. Um, and and overall, it, uh, the device feels sturdy, um, and it's it's an EDU device, so that's not that surprising. Uh, but with the great keyboard. If the trackpad didn't have that little bit of travel issue, which hopefully most of them won't, uh, we could have gotten a bad one, and that technically is a pretty easily fixable thing. Um, I, I'm, I'm relatively impressed here, uh, right off the start. I'm gonna throw something up on music. Hey, let's listen to John Mayer's new album here. Um, and here's what I'll say. I say it about every <laughs> Chromebook, pretty much. Uh, they're laptop speakers. Don't expect too much. They're downward firing, and you can clearly hear a difference when I remove it from the table. So they Yeah, if I cover them up, it muffles the sound pretty good. So it's going to perform so-so in your lap. If you have it flipped around in display mode, the nice thing is those speakers point upwards. Um, but they're uh, much less loud actually when they're in that orientation versus when they're on the table and kind of bouncing straight up. So again, take it or leave it. They're laptop speakers. I would uh, highly advise if you're really worried about speakers and sound, that's odd. Hmm. Uh, if you're worried about speakers and sound, get a Bluetooth speaker, uh, Get you know, invest in something that's gonna sound a little bit better. But overall, durable, 
keyboard feels good. I think the trackpad with a little work is going to feel really good. Feels really snappy, and with 57, it should be uh, even snappier. So we'll go over more of that kind of stuff in the full review. But uh, thus far, for a, a moderately priced Chromebook, I'm actually pretty impressed. And for Lenovo's first foray into an ARM-powered Chromebook, um, I, I think this one might be impressive, and I think it's going to go over really well in schools. But check back, uh, stay with the channel, and, and obviously we'll have a full review of this device up uh, in the coming weeks. So guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below, and until next time, we'll see you.